about the invernal canal so the invernal canal is from the uh, it has a inlet and outlet and also it has an anterior wall posterior wall and roof and floor and the inguinal canal is present in the arch in the inguinal ligament that we have in the, you are seeing that this is the external oblique aponeurosis muscle and it is winding down backwards this is called as inguinal ligament i have cut the external oblique muscle horizontally along the like in line with the iliac crest and also vertical incision and i have reflected external oblique aponeurosis so that you will see the inguinal canal here so this is the inguinal canal it is from the mid inguinal point that is 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal point we see the deep inguinal ring and on the medial side you have the superficial inguinal ring from the superficial inguinal ring to the deep inguinal ring is the inguinal canal so this superficial inguinal ring is seen in the external oblique aponeurosis it has a superior crust and inferior crust and the content is permatic cord and the ilio inguinal nerve this is the ilio inguinal nerve so now i have reflected the external oblique aponeurosis you are going to see that this is an internal oblique muscle this is an internal oblique muscle this one also i have cut at the level of the origin at the, this origin of the internal oblique aponeurosis is later two thirds of the inguinal ligament here i have cut it one and i have flexed it this way and you can see the transverse abdominus muscle so this transverse abdominus muscle take origin from the lateral one third of the inguinal ligament and these two muscles join together to form or arched upwards and backwards and downwards and medially these two muscles join together to form the conjoint tendon so this is a conjoint tendon you can see here this gets inserted into the pubic tubercle so this is a conjoint tendon and you can see uh, these muscles below that is the fascia transversalis so this is the fascia transversalis you can able to see so from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring is the inguinal canal so the inguinal canal has an anterior wall posterior wall roof and floor as i told so the anterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed by the skin superficial fatty and deep membranous layer and then is external oblique aponeurosis and on the lateral side if you observe this internal oblique also on the lateral side forms a anterior wall so what forms a posterior wall is but the posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis not only that on the medial side a small portion of Uh, conjoint tendon and then on over it we have the reflected part of the inguinal ligament this is a reflected part of the inguinal ligament so the posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis conjoint tendon and then you have this uh, reflected part of the inguinal ligament this is a posterior wall what forms the roof is this is the arched fibers of the uh, internal oblique and the transverse abdominus so that is nothing but the conjoint tendon that forms the roof and the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament and it has an inlet and outlet inlet is formed by the deep inguinal ring that is present an oval gap present at the fascia transversalis present in the fascia transversalis and that is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery so this is a deep inguinal ring that is deep inguinal ring is present 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal point mid inguinal point is nothing but the point between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle and this is a inlet and outlet is superficial inguinal ring that is present in the external oblique aponeurosis so these are the boundaries of the inguinal canal and the contents are the spermatic cord and the ilio inguinal nerve